CNBC Make It spoke to 70 parents who had successful children and they came up with a comprehensive list of do's and don'ts of raising successful children. Welcome to Brilliant Academic, the channel where we cover all things related to careers and academics. The do's, give children extreme independence, actively nurture compassion, welcome failure early and often, let go of control and lead by following. Susan and Anne Wachsiki are two incredibly accomplished sisters. Susan, Google's first marketing manager, became its CEO in 2014. Anne co-founded 23andMe, a genomics and biotech company. Their mother, Esther, said that her girls grew up knowing she trusted them to behave responsibly. The girls were given the freedom that some parents, especially today, would look down upon. I gave my children the opportunity to be very independent early on. I had three children in four years and no help, so I put them to work out of necessity. Her children loved that sense of freedom. She's quoted as saying, I think it gave them a lot of confidence. I would put my five-year-old daughter on a plane alone with a name tag around her neck to visit her grandmother in LA. Even if you're afraid to give your children the kind of freedom Esther gave hers, you can still give them things to do around the house to contribute to the family, like chores, to make them responsible and to develop their confidence. Children whose parents show them how it feels to help others who are struggling, whether across the world or across the kitchen table, get a head start in developing a compassionate outlook. Scott Harrison is the founder of Charity Water, a nonprofit that restores and maintains wells to give people sustainable access to clean water. In only 15 years, Charity Water has funded 60,000 projects in 29 developing countries, brought water to 12 million people, and raised almost half a billion dollars for the cause. Before Scott's mom, Joan, passed away, she said that she credits his success to the parenting foundation she set early on, built on spiritual community, discipline, and hard work. When he was in elementary and middle school, she would help him sort through his clothes, books, and toys, and they would give some away to kids who could use them. Early awareness of other people's problems can also encourage children to start asking entrepreneurial questions such as, do things really have to be this way? Or, how can I make them better? Nia Batts co-founded Detroit Blows, an inclusive, non-toxic hair and beauty service. When asked how she gathered the courage to leave her secure job and start something from scratch, she said it was because she learned the merits of failing early and often when she was young. She's quoted as saying, My mom was a trial attorney. Most of the time she won, sometimes she lost. I remember my dad often asking me, What did you fail at today? He asked me when I was young and he was driving me to and from school. He asked me when I was in college. And he asked me more frequently when I started working. So many parents try to save their children from failing, but Nia's parents wanted to make sure they created an environment where it was okay to fail. I think they were excited to watch the process unfold as I grew up and learned that lesson. My father taught me that in your wounds lie your gifts and in your failures lie opportunities, she said. Children need time to discover their paths. Many experience periods when it's unclear where they're going. In this situation, some parents may see their children as being lost, but parents of kids who grow up to become entrepreneurs are more likely to see their kids as exploring. Here's the tough part for a lot of parents. If you want to raise an entrepreneur, you need to lead by following, regardless of where your child wants to go. Kenneth Ginsberg, author of Building Resilience in Children and Teens, offers this advice. Getting out of the way is a challenge. We want to help, fix, and guide kids. But we have to remind ourselves that when we let them figure things out for themselves, we communicate this. I think you are competent and wise. In other words, see what your kids want, what their passion is, what they are good at, and what makes them happy. Allow their gift to reveal itself, then support it. Tell them how proud you are of them for succeeding in their chosen path, and then tell them again and again until you're sure they believe it. They may not end up with the career you had in mind, but if they're able to pursue their passion, they'll be happy and fulfilled. And isn't that what all parents want for their children? Now let's look at the don'ts. Never treat your children's hobby as a waste of time. Never make all the choices for your children. 
Never prize money or high paying degrees over happiness and never neglect financial literacy. Sports, video games, debating, music, bird watching, YouTubing. Every successful individual had a passion outside of the classroom as a child. Their parents never veered them away from their hobby because they knew it was keeping them mentally active. Radha Agrawal is the founder of Daybreaker, a global morning dance movement with over 500,000 community members in 30 cities around the world. Previously, she was the CEO of Super Sprouts, a children's entertainment movement focused on healthy eating. Growing up, her passion was soccer. With support from her parents, she and her twin sister Mickey played three hours a day, starting from when they were five years old. Eventually, they played at Cornell University, where they were known as the legendary soccer twins. Although her career today has nothing to do with soccer, Radha said she developed a lot of grit and resilience from the sport. She is quoted as saying, you have to be disciplined. You learn to be organized and focused, and you learn the politics of teamwork and what it takes to be a captain. It can be extremely tempting to constantly make decisions for your children. After all, you're the adult. You know your children better than anyone else, and you don't want them to suffer. But successful parents resist that temptation. Ellen Gustafson co-founded Feed Project, providing food in schools for children. Today, she is a thought leader and regular speaker on social innovation. Her mother, Maura, is quoted as saying, We encouraged her to be independent and to think for herself. I tell her, trust but verify, check it out, be sure it's true, don't drink the Kool-Aid, just because everyone else is doing it, that doesn't mean you have to. You want your kid to grow up to be cautious but not fearful. As a parent, you can see what their strengths are, but you have to let them figure it out. The best way to do that is by asking questions like, what choice do you think would be more helpful to you in the future? This point is not a slide at degrees. Formal education works for a lot of people, but it isn't a solution for everyone. A degree may represent an expensive waste of your child's time if it has no connection to their interests. And if their only reason for being in school is to get the piece of paper or make the contacts needed to land a high paying job. Someone who loves something enough and works hard at it will find a way to turn it into a living, even without a degree in that field. And they won't be afraid to tackle an opportunity that won't pay anything for a few years as they might be if they had to pay off high student debt every month. All of the parents of successful children said that they made an effort to teach their children about money in one form or another. Joel Holland sold half of his first company, Storyblocks, for $10 million in 2012. He acquired a strong work ethic at an early age. He and his sister were given the job of sweeping to get their allowance. He is quoted as saying, the floors had to be clean enough to eat off of. It taught me about hard work. In grade school, everyone had roller skates, but my parents wouldn't buy them for me. They told me, if you want them, you have to save your money. It made me very angry at the time, but it really made me appreciate the value of money. His parents also didn't pay for his college education. Joel went to Babson College on student loans and from the money he made from working. Because I paid for college, I never missed a class. I had calculated the cost of each class at $500. If I was tempted to skip a class, I always thought there is nothing I could possibly do during this hour that's worth more than $500. Click here to find out which degrees to pursue if you want to become a millionaire. That's it you guys, thanks for watching. Do check out my other videos. And as always, mischief managed.